What's going on everybody? This is Brandon with Jarhead Diagnostics. This is just a quick video to kind of show you the uses of pulse sensor and show you how it'll greatly enhance your diagnostic abilities. I'm just doing this on my wife's Jeep Wrangler. Technically it's a known good vehicle. And then I'm using four channels on my Varus. We've got one pulse sensor connected to my intake. Whenever you connect it to your intake, you want it as close to the throttle plate as possible. So that way you can view all of the valves in a proper waveform. If you do it off to the side, like off of your brake booster, you might get a skewed waveform because you're closer to some valves than others. So I recommend trying to put them as close to the intake as you close to the throttle plate as you can with as short a hose as possible. Next, I'm plugged into my ignition coil, just back probed on the control side to use this as my sink. And then I've got an amp clamp around the positive battery terminal for my relative compression. You come back here. I've got another one inside of the exhaust, so that way I can capture my exhaust pulses as well. That total setup took less than five minutes. Then once you start, just do a clear flood on a Jeep, just pedal to the floor, hold it, turn it over. Now, red channel is my relative compression. Green is into my exhaust, or sorry, green is my intake. Red, blue is my exhaust and then yellow is my control. As you can see, it's pretty even across from a relative compression, so I really don't have an issue there. And then, as far as my intake pulses, for the most part, they look even. I mean, it is a 14 with 105,000 on it, so there might be a little skews in there. But as you can tell, the exhaust capture, it's really good. So like I said, this is just a quick video to show you the uses of pulse sensor and why you should be using them in your diagnostic process, especially if you feel like there might be a mechanical fault. Thank you guys and have a good day.